Greetings my auroral animators. Doing Aurora in Cinema 4D has basically exactly the same process as doing it in After Effects, but this time it's in three dimensions. We'll use three noises and three lights instead of three blurs. First thing we need is a simple plane, and this will basically be our magnetosphere. I'm going to set that one to be 1000 by 1000 centimeters, so a little bit bigger than it was. And now it needs a material. This will be our auroral material. On this material, we want to put that onto our magnetosphere. That material, we don't want any color, we don't want any reflectance, but we want luminance and transparency. Refractions, we want none of that, so we basically set that to just one. And we can check off total internal and exit reflections too. Now the luminance is only here so we can see what we're doing now with our noises. The easiest way to do this would be to just render out the noise we made in After Effects in the last one and add that to the texture channel here and invert it. Now the best way to do it is to get yourself a smoke machine, a line laser and a high speed camera and film that line laser cutting through the smoke and use that as a texture. But if that's a bit too much fat for you, here's a fully C4D version that does basically the same thing. In our texture, we're going to drop in a layer shader, and in that layer shader, we will make noise number one, ribbons. And this is going to give us the same kind of ribbons we made in After Effects, and I found that the best noise to use for that is the cranal noise. It looks a little something like this. I'm going to set the octaves to just one, so they become nice and noodly streaks, and turn up the global scale to 500, so they're nice and big. There we go, that's our main shape. Now the second noise, just like in After Effects, is going to be our mask. And that you can use just about any noise with. I'm going to use a gaseous one, scaled up to about 600%. And then I'm going to clip the highlights a little bit, down to about 50%. And that's going to make less of it visible. Keep in mind that this is not an alpha, this is a transparency. So the white controls where it's actually transparent, and the black controls where it's actually visible. I can go back to our layer shader and set that to transfer mode add. And it's going to cut away at our noodly ribbons. Now for the final noise, this is going to be our pillars. And I'm going to leave that as a standard noise noise. But I'm going to set the global scale to a tiny 2 just so it gets very, very small indeed. And then that one is going to have the transfer mode screen. Not quite as intense as the add, but still does enough to add granular detail to our material. Now for the animation of these, it'll be the same situation as in After Effects. I'll start with the pillars, and I want that animating quickly. Let's turn on the animation for the preview here. So I'm going to set the animation speed to a solid 6. Now we got ourselves a grainy animation there. With a mask, that will be much slower. I'll set the animation speed to 0.3. Looks like this. Gives us a nice and slow flow. And for the ribbons, I'm going to make that even slower with an animation speed of 0.15. And all together, that leaves us with the texture looking like this. And believe it or not, that is actually half the magic done. Now the other half that's left is doing the blurs. Sorry, lights. So let's make a light. And the light type we want is a parallel spotlight, just so it creates like a tube of light. And then let's set the visible light to inverse volumetric. And this is going to be the key to the whole operation. Because inverse volumetric is only going to create light where the light is actually blocked. And I think you can see where this is going. Let's call this first light edge, because that's what it's going to be. Give it the same colors as we had in After Effects for the edge, a cool sort of green. And let's put that light into a cloner. The cloner mode needs to be set to object, and the object in question will be our magnetosphere. And the distribution should be even, so let's set that to polygon center. This isn't going to do anything yet, but as soon as we go into transform and just move it one centimeter down on the z-axis, so it's just a little bit behind the magnetosphere, we have a screen full of dodgy aurora. So let's go through and de-dodge that. Under details on our edge light, let's set the outer radius a little bit lower. And it's this outer radius that seems to control the detail of the aurora. And a smaller number gives it more detail. So if we set it to 50, we get quite sharp aurora. And if we turn it up to something crazy, like, like 500, it's going to take a bit longer to render. And we're going to get softer looking aurora. 
kind of like a shadow map, but there's a set resolution of visible light for each light. So if we set this lower, there's just a smaller area to stretch that set resolution over. I'm going to set it to 75. Now on the visibility tab, I'm going to set the outer distance to just a tiny 25 centimeters. And I'm also going to set the sample distance to one centimeter to get rid of these jagged lines because the sample distance controls the overall quality. And here too, lower means better and slower. Finally, I'm going to set the brightness to 300, just to pack a little bit more punch in that edge. Now for the second light, I'm going to copy light 1 edge and make that a child of light 1. This is going to be light 2 streaks. And since that's a child of light 1, it's going to clone together with light 1. So they're always going to be in the same place. And for the streaks, we want to change that to a slightly warmer color, same as in After Effects, 105 on the hue. And under visibility, I will change the outer distance to 35, so it reaches out a little bit longer. And the brightness, I will set to 200, so it's a little bit weaker. And for our third and final light, we'll make a copy of light number two. And this is going to be, surprise, surprise, light number three. And this one I'll call purple because it's going to be purple. So in color, we will change that to purple. That means 280 on the hue wheel and saturation I will crank all the way up to 100%. Now under visibility I'm going to change the inner distance to 15 so it starts fading a little bit later. So now we got a little purple fringe around the top of our aurora and I'll set the brightness to something around 100 or even a little bit less just to make it more subtle. Let that green come through a little bit stronger. Now if we move underneath the aurora like you know you usually would see aurora you can see that it's looking quite Aurora-esque, with a notable issue that we can see our magnetosphere with its texture. So to fix that, let's add a render tag, compositing tag, to the magnetosphere, and uncheck everything except for cast shadows under the tag. So it doesn't receive shadows, not seen by camera, not seen by rays, not seen by GI, not seen by transparency, and simply only casting shadows, because we need that for the inverse volume metrics. That leaves us with something looking a little bit like this. And moving a little something like this. If you want your Aurora longer or shorter, the easiest thing to do is go into the cloner and just scale your clones up on the Z axis. It keeps them all proportional but makes them longer or shorter. Now if you want to add this setup to other objects, all you need to keep in mind is to keep these lights approximately the same density. So if you want the magnetosphere object, for instance, to be smaller, just make sure to change the width and height segments to match that new scale. You're going to have some pretty wicked looking Aurora. But what if you wanted to add Aurora to something crazy like a planet for instance? Well, first you need to make a sphere, right? Make that about planet size, that about 500 centimeters, perfectly to scale. And then reference this actual magnetosphere sphere in the cloner object. And add the compositing tag and material to that one. Now that's looking a little bit dodgy because we need to change the type of sphere from standard to icosahedron so that our lights are a little bit more evenly cloned over the surface and increase the segments from 16 up to 21. And now we get this nice and thick planetary aurora. But the thing about a magnetosphere is that it has a north and a south pole, right? And that tends to be where the aurora is happening. Borealis, Australis. And to make our aurora do that, all we need to do is go into the shader and add a gradient on top of everything. Set that gradient to a 2D vertical one. Keep it white around the middle and black towards the edges because white is transparent. And now we've got our aurora borealis and our aurora australis. And of course, once you start comping these renders, you really want to add a little crush on that gamma and a truck ton of glows. This After Effects comp is included on the Patreon files. And if you like glowy Aurora as much as you like working smoothly with clients, then you really should join the Process of Motion course. It'll teach you everything about running a motion design project from brief to delivery. And you'll see some Aurora in the process. Now for the next tutorial, it will be the Volcanic Smoke one, because it's waited for far too long. But after that one, I have something a little special planned. So stay tuned for that. Thank you to my patrons, praise be the immortals, and to you all, stay in motion.